Welcome back. We are still feeling these crippling effects of the pandemic on our economy. Eight months into it and a lot of businesses are still closed. Millions of Americans still out of work with little or no way to pay their bills. That's some leading experts predict a 45 percent increase in homelessness over the next year. That would mean hundreds of thousands of more men, women and children living on the streets in tents, shelters, cars or motels throughout the country. One woman believes it is time to change the way we think about homelessness. She wants to reshape policies and she wants to focus on communities to help people, help families get back on their feet. In tents, under bridges, along streets, this is the scene in almost every big city. I had nowhere to go. I was living on the benches. Keith McClellan spent almost a year like this. His son, forced into foster care, left wondering why. Kind of confused. Families with children are the fastest growing segment of the homeless population. Fastest growing segment. Families make up close to 40% of the homeless population. Rajni Shankar Brown has dedicated her life to changing how people and communities respond to the homeless. It is critical that we are looking at it from all different angles. Shankar Brown believes lack of living wage jobs and access to affordable housing are main contributors to this increase. Since the pandemic, uh, we have seen this even escalate. She's working to reform the system, solving the problem at the community level. Right now, many families are afraid to ask for help. There's the fear of, their, of the state taking their kids away. She is a driving force behind the Neighborhood Center of West Volusia that provides housing, food, clothes, and emergency assistance. Trying to build resources, ways that families can truly thrive and receive the support they need. Her mentoring program, known as the Hatters University Scholars, brings students to campus to expose them to the benefits of higher education. All too often, poverty and homelessness prevent our children and youth from realizing and reaching their potential. And it is up to us to disrupt this narrative. The center, combined with community members who cared, helped get Keith a higher paying full time job and Reunite him with his son. Everybody, thank you for helping my dad out. I never stop. That's, that's and she has clearly taken so many steps towards helping all these families. One more step, workshops for educational leaders and teachers throughout the country. She also started a poverty and homelessness conference trying to raise awareness. She also envisions creating an interdisciplinary center for equity and social change at Stetson University that would address these issues and support children, schools, and communities in poverty.